Watching News 4 San Antonio at 10. I'm Chief Meteorologist Albert Flores. Showers continue to converge across South Texas. The coverage is equivalent to what we had earlier, but the intensity has dropped about half of what it was before. That leaves us with a flash flood watch still in effect through tomorrow afternoon. The warnings have temporarily dropped more later. All right, thanks, Albert. And right now, there are about 10 streets closed here in San Antonio because of the flooding. But with the ongoing rain, that number could rise. And our Darian Trotter is up in Leon Valley keeping an eye on things. So, Darian, how's it looking out there tonight? Hey, Randy, the rain here is slow and steady in Leon Valley. Still emergency crews here at the Leon Valley Fire Department. Well, they are keeping watch on road conditions, specifically roads that are in low lying areas, areas that are prone to flooding. Just yesterday, they enacted the flood plan and tonight we rode with the crew as they went along Evers Road. That's one of those low lying areas to see just how conditions were there. So far, we can tell you that no barricades have been put into place and no roads have been closed, but that of course could continue to change as the rain here continues to fall. We'll keep an eye on the situation for you. Back to you, Randy. Robert Price here at the live desk where we have a major accident to tell you about far northwest side a live look at the scene crews in the middle of the road. There are the vehicles. This is Babcock Road out past loop 1604. Let's take that full tell you what we know so far. Sheriff's office handling this rack not far from the corner of Babcock and Kyle Seal Parkway actually closer to a street named Terramont. A deputy just came over talked to our crew but he wasn't able to say very much waiting on his superior to sort things out. We know it's a two vehicle accident involves a Ford F-250 and a smaller car as we push in just a little bit here on the scene. The smaller car looks pretty mangled. You get a pretty decent look here. We know the person in that car had to be cut out has already been taken away. Not clear on injuries though. Either way, as you might imagine, doing quite a number on traffic in this area. Our crew has been on the scene for about an hour now. They're telling us northbound traffic here is completely blocked along Babcock. Cars are having to turn around, find another way. As soon as we get an update, we will bring it to you. But for now, let's send it back to you. Randy. All right, thanks, Robert. We have the latest now on a major drug investigation we've been following all day, and it involves students, high school students out in Medina County. There's been one arrest so far. News 4 San Antonio's Camilla Rambaldi joins us live from the jail in Hondo. Camilla, any more arrests yet? Randy, at this hour, no. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I checked in with the sheriff, and he tells me there could be more arrests. But right now, they're still trying to sort everything out to see how many people, including students, are actually involved in this case. 18-year-old Paul Juarez Jr. was arrested in Natalia near the intersection of Kearney and 3rd Street. I talked to some parents here today off camera. They tell me they didn't know about what happened, and they are really surprised. I also learned from South yeah. Texas Rural Health Services in Divine that two students who might be involved in the case are patients at the center right now. The individuals that uh, uh, we are uh, we're talking about, we already had two of those individuals in our treatment program. Communication is uh, of utmost important to avoid discussion and uh, uh, denying that uh, we're okay. Sometimes it's the worst thing that we can do. So far, the sheriff isn't saying which schools the students involved go to. And tonight, Juarez remains in jail on a $75,000 bond. We will put in another call to the sheriff tomorrow and let you know if any additional arrests have been made. Back to you. All right, thanks, Camilla. Tomorrow here in San Antonio, we're going to be following a hearing on a lawsuit filed against the San Antonio Police Department. A woman who claims she was inappropriately searched, invasively searched on the side of the road last year. She'll be in court hoping to get body camera footage of that incident. What we really are seeking here is transparency. We have sent, and I will be offering to the court, several letters asking under the Texas Public Information Act for documents related to what occurred and body cam video, dash cam video, which to us seems like a fairly uh, simple request and one that should be honored. Now, San Antonio police themselves investigated the woman's claims, but they found no fault with the officer. Of course, we'll let you know what the court decides here tomorrow. Want to get you the latest now out of Puerto Rico, a U.S. territory still in crisis tonight, at least much of it. Despite some reports, though, the governor of Puerto Rico tonight says that the administration has been very attentive. 
and called the president, or the president has called him a number of times. That video tonight shows the other big issue, though. The resources that are available, they're having trouble getting to the people who need them as debris is still blocking many roads. And there are also other problems. The problem has been with the, with the logistics for those trucking companies, as an example, they have their equipment available and ready, then they're facing the challenge of, of the fact that there's no fuel. And the other issue is a century old law called the Jones Act, originally intended to promote shipping. It's actually made it twice as expensive to move goods from the mainland to Puerto Rico. President tonight, though, still holding off on waiving that act, at least for now. In the meantime, tonight, Air Force cargo planes are offering what support they can to the areas hit hardest by the hurricanes. Jeff Patterson now takes us on a flight to St. Croix. With a flight crew from an Air Force base in Texas and doctors and nurses from several units in the U.S. Air Force, they first load supplies early in the morning at McDill Air Force Base, then take off for a four-hour flight to St. Croix not knowing exactly what they will find when they land. When we arrive in St. Croix, if there are any uh, ICU level patients, critical care patients, we are the ones who will be responsible uh, for safely transporting uh, those patients back to the States. This team has to be prepared for just about anything. They prepare for the worst in case it happens. We don't really know what to expect. They gave us one patient when we were going down there. with team members from the 43rd Aeromedical Squadron from Pope Air Force Base in North Carolina and the 11th Medical Group from Andrews Air Force Base. This critical care air transport team flies into St. Croix, expecting to pick up one patient, and instead they find out they will be evacuating more than 50 patients. Everything from med surge, infections, fractures. Colonel Tammy Rougeau is the director of patient staging. Some of them have long-term illnesses. Some of them were patients in the hospital prior to the storm coming through. Some of them have become ill or be were injured in the storm, and some after the storm. The patients are processed in an area normally used by cruise ship passengers, then loaded onto our C-130 for a five-hour flight to Atlanta. The mission is now almost over. This flight crew has just landed at the Air Force Base in Atlanta, giving these patients the urgent medical care they need. In Atlanta, Jeff Patterson for NBC News. A woman continues to help people who fled Hurricane Harvey here. She has set up a family of four young girls from Houston at a home she was trying to lease up in Round Rock. So with the help of her friend and other volunteers, they were able to move that family in, stock the house with food and furniture, and move the family just two days before the shelter they were living in was going to close. So when we were able to get in there the very last day and pick up the family of um, with the four children, you know, it was just they were very excited. The little girls too. They were. It was. It was really touching to pull up to the house and them be so excited and screaming in the back seat because they were so happy to be in a house, you know, instead of the shelter. HEB has donated gift cards and school supplies for the kids who will be now enrolling into a school up there in Round Rock. And a carpenter from Southern Cactus Woodworks here in San Antonio donated kitchen sets and that furniture. Still ahead tonight, how a local family escaped the Caribbean finally after riding out a Category 5 storm. I could hear people in the rooms near us screaming because they were so scared. You're watching News 4 San Antonio. go into our newsroom tonight. This is sailors helping evacuate families from the Caribbean island of Dominica. It has been a week now since Maria hit. It's left 80% of the buildings there damaged. Most of the communications line cut. You can see crews there loading up kids and families and offering up a few high fives to the kids. Now tonight they're on the nearby islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe while the cleanup and recovery on their home island is just beginning. And escaping the destruction like that turns out can be the hardest part. One of our executive producers was in the British Virgin Islands three weeks ago when Hurricane Irma hit. Now, he and his wife had planned to spend eight days on a boat sailing there in the Caribbean. But as Delane Matthews shows us tonight, Mother Nature had other plans. Memories that would last a lifetime. It did. Things that you've never seen before. And it, it'll just be a trip that's unforgettable. On Friday, September 1st, Brian and Christina Eckert arrived on Tortola, the largest of the British Virgin Islands, 
south of Puerto Rico, where they boarded a boat to begin their adventure. Yeah, we just start taking pictures and laying out and having a good time on the boat. They snorkeled and swam, saw sharks and turtles. But nearly two days in, they got the news. Irma had grown into a Category 5 hurricane. They headed right back to the island where Christina got to work on getting home. There's no way that we can get you out of the island before this storm hits. But there were no planes. There were no boats. They were stuck on an island with a monster storm headed right their way. And all Christina could think about, her girls back at home. In case we don't make it back, these are our life insurance policies. This is, um, these are the passwords to things. This is how Avery will handle the situation. This is how Jilly will handle the situation. And this is what you're gonna need to do um, to help them through this situation along the way. And um, I remember thinking, this is, this is not what I expected here. I do not want to be writing this note to my mom. Thinking, thinking about death. Everyone was given a hotel room, which was right on the water, but Brian was actually relieved with what he saw. Built a concrete, an inner concrete wall. Um, the bathroom was a very small enclosed area that I felt very comfortable if we had to be in that room, that we could write out anything in that room. On Wednesday morning, September 6th, Irma reached the island. We have definitely moved inside because it is very strong gust out there right now. When they could, they updated family and friends on Facebook. And when the winds picked up, I could hear people in the rooms near us screaming because they were so scared. They hunkered down in the bathroom with a mattress over their heads and listened as debris smashed against the hotel. It was really loud. And the pressure in your ears was like when you take off or land in a plane. And so you kept trying to pop your eardrums because there was just it would get painful and it would build up. We lost power during this part. And so at one point it started to get, it lightened up in the room. And I looked at Brian and I said, babe, I think they got the electricity on during the storm. That's amazing. I looked around because we were in the bathroom. So I had to look around the corner and I saw that uh, a palm tree had fallen into our roof. So I just calmly turned back and I said, no, it's not electricity, it's a new skylight. <laughs> we don't have a roof anymore. For hours, they sat inside that bathroom as wind gusts reached 225 miles per hour. And when it was finally over... There were fallen trees everywhere. There were buildings that had been knocked down. There were boats that uh, were standing upright or upside down. When you looked at the mountain side around us, it, there was nothing green left on the hillside. Several people had been killed on the island, but everyone in the hotel survived. And while it wasn't the dream getaway they had hoped for, Brian and Christina have one heck of a story to tell. They survived a Category 5 hurricane on an island in a bathroom together, side by side. And it took them nearly two days to finally get off the island, then onto American territory. It was a stranger who owned a boat that picked them up, took them then all the way to San Juan, Puerto Rico for free. Robert Price back here at the live desk with some new video in just outside Mexico City. Popocatepetl spewing lava and ash into the sky. The volcano has been erupting for several hours now. Incandescent rocks landing more than a half mile down the slope. Mexico's National Disaster Prevention Agency also reporting ashfall in towns west of the peak. The agency says the eruption is not related to last week's earthquake. In fact, Popocatepetl has been erupting periodically since 1994. Randy? And making headlines tonight, one person is dead, another hurt after a rock slide at Yosemite National Park. It happened on a popular climbing route. Right now is considered the peak climbing season in Yosemite. Tonight, the victims' names have not yet been released. This is a once-in-a-generation opportunity. Well, tonight, reaction is coming in to President Trump's new tax plan as the National Conference of State Legislatures says it is dismayed by the proposal to do away with the deduction for state and local taxes that are paid. And they claim tens of millions of middle-class taxpayers would actually have a greater tax burden if that plan were to be approved. Our framework includes our explicit commitment that tax reform will protect low-income and middle-income households, not the wealthy. Now, here is what an Associated Press fact check has to say about this. They find claims on both sides of the debate, quote, dubious. 
Trump claims there's little for rich people in his plan, but the proposed elimination of the estate tax Democrats expected to be a substantial boost for the, the super plan. rich. And while Democrats argue there is little plan in that plan for the middle class. Behind Republicans' vague framework and deceptive math, the American people find a billionaire's, billionaire's first tax plan that fails the middle class. But according to the AP, the middle class could benefit substantially, but that largely depends on Congress. They'll have to work on many of the key elements of the plan that have not yet been determined. Now our Ariana Lubelli has a story tonight about a mother here who is using her medical condition actually as a gift to others. It wasn't long after Alethea Castillo gave birth to her first son two and a half years ago that she realized she was producing an unusual amount of breast milk. I send it out by when I first pumped, so this is like September. After feeding her son, she would freeze the extra milk pumped. But then the freezer just started piling up. Piles in the freezer turned into coolers full in the mail. I currently have June and July that I have to send out. She began donating her milk to the Prolaxia Bioscience Center based in California, where it then gets sent to help premature babies in NICUs across the U.S. It makes me feel good because, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to start. It's emotional for her to talk about. I got to see a lot of babies in there for other conditions. When her second son was five weeks old, he developed a respiratory illness. He was treated in the PICU. There, Castillo saw firsthand the great need for her breast milk. I was thinking, wow, like I'm helping these moms that are, you know, in here. She's now donated more than 3,000 ounces of her breast milk, not including this week's shipment of 1,600 ounces. Her milk was also used to help the Bioscience Center send emergency shipments to Houston hospitals during the hurricane. It just like all like aligned. And then when I my son got sick and I got to see that, like the premature babies and um, how sick they are and how many months that they can be in the NICU, that was a, an eye opener. Ariana Lubelli, News 4 San Antonio. Another soggy night across South Texas, kind of cool, 73, 82% humidity, and we have a front just right on our doorstep that's going to come in and kind of blow all this out. Let's do a little review for the year, 23.67, we're a little over two inches below the normal, and you can see August was a big month for us as far as the rainfall goes. For this week, we really had our big day yesterday, 1.27, today we had 0.36, so for the month we're at about 2. Of course, Maria continues to meander around off the eastern seaboard, still bringing them high tides. The moisture flow continues with the jet stream into the midsection of the country. You're, we're just one of the stops that all that water makes on its way up into the northern plains. Here's the front. It doesn't have any energy behind it tonight, so it's stalled. It'll pick up again tomorrow as our upper level system comes across, gives it a little extra push, and it'll slowly start meandering through the state of Texas and eventually drop some temperatures and more importantly bring some dry air into the space and allow for a nice clearing and a beautiful weekend. 60s and 70s, so we've been below normal now in temperatures for days. Rainfall total of course has been above normal and the steering current, you see it kind of lightly painted in, is still southwest to northeast. But as that low, which is kind of sitting about here, moves away, things will just start slowly uh, winding down. Here's the crazy part, is that the Texas Commission on Environment says, this is the biggest drought area we have in the state. Uvalde and Eagle Pass, which had tons of rain. So their new report comes out tomorrow. Let's see what they tell us. Flash flood wash through tomorrow at 7 p.m., which now does include San Antonio as well and Bear County. Temperatures at this hour with all this cooled rain, as you can see into the low 70s across the region, which looks pretty good for everybody. So flash flood watch continues zone after zone. We either have mid 70s, upper 70s, uh, low 80s across the region. Still copious amounts of rain expected. It won't be until tomorrow night or into Friday before this begins to lighten up just a tiny bit. Luckily, the eastern zone, which doesn't need the rain right now, is the one that doesn't have the flash flood watch. Seven day forecast looks like this then. We stay still below normal. We have a beautiful weekend in store and that goes for anyone of the zones. All this is online at news4sa.com.
Hey, the Spurs young point guard is in good hands. Larry Brown is back helping with training camp. We're all over with the Spurs. And tonight on Don's Extra Point, San Antonio, you're missing out. The best kept secret in town straight ahead. Sports desk. Hi. Who remembers Larry Brown when he was coaching the Spurs? Randy? Yes. Yeah? Good. Well, guess what? He's coaching them again. Larry, Tim Duncan, Boris, Tiago Splitter, they were all at Spurs training camp today. It was like old times. Look at the who's who. Timmy was working around with the big guys. Boris Diaw has recently signed to play with the French team. Tiago's playing days appear to be over. He may now look to go into coaching because of hip surgery. We're also getting our first look at Rudy Gay as a Spur. He says right now, for him, the Spurs, and Coach Pop, they're still in kind of the get-to-know-you phase. It's more about just getting to know each other. I mean, um, we played we played against each other for a long time, but I think right now it's just getting to, he's getting to learn me, I'm getting to learn him. Um, obviously, basketball is going to... It's going, to, it's, going to, it's going to happen. You know, we, we both want to win, so we're going to do what we have to do to win. But uh, I think right now it's just you know, getting to know me as a person. Meanwhile, look who DeJounte Murray is getting to know. Yep, that's former Spurs coach Larry Brown helping out at camp. Now, you may remember this, Randy, you will. Larry was an all-star point guard player back in the 60s, and he has coached the very best, including Allen Iverson. And young DeJounte could not have a better mentor than LB, and he's tapping into that knowledge. I mean, being around Coach Pop, he's a legend, but, you know, seeing somebody like Coach coming in is, you know, even more, you know, a thankful thing for me because I like to be around, you know, great people and people that know the game and that are willing to, you know, teach me. I'm not afraid to ask questions and learn. And with an attitude like that, the young point guard looks like he's going to be just fine. All right, tonight on Don's Extra Point, I'm giving you 10 days notice, San Antonio. UTSA football October 7th in the Dome be there because right now the size of the crowd in the Dome is nowhere near the crowd of the opening day and the product isn't even close to being the same. On September 3rd, 2011, UTSA fans nearly packed the Dome. Understandable, it was the first ever game. And was all was said and done, fans rushed the field. Are you kidding me? Yes, for a win over Northeastern Oklahoma State. That's right. 57,000 fans turned out to see UTSA and Northeastern Oklahoma State. Let that sink in. Six years later, what was once, you're just happy to be here, UTSA fans now have, you've arrived. These are this week's total defense stats nationwide. Look at that. UTSA is number two. Look at the company they're keeping. Michigan, Clemson, Auburn. Now, I'm not saying that UTSA is Michigan, Clemson, Auburn good, but they're good. They're undefeated. They dominated Southern and Texas State. And for the very first time ever, they beat a Power 5 conference team, Big 12, Baylor. I know, before you say it, I know Baylor's in a down year. But the same Baylor team that UTSA held to just 10 points, and they were fortunate to score those 10, that same Baylor team hung 41 on Oklahoma last week. Oklahoma, number three in the country, has a chance to win the national title. UTSA has perhaps five NFL players on this roster. Their coach is going to be coaching at, I don't know, Auburn or Ole Miss or some SEC school before you know it. He's one of the top coaching prospects in the nation, but he's here now, and this team is legit. So I'm giving you 10 days notice. UTSA football, October 7th in the Dome, be there. Not because they deserve it, but because San Antonio, after all these years of waiting for big time football product, you deserve it. And now you've got one. Hey, congratulations to Keith Jefferson of Judson. His one-handed catch got 53% of the vote and he wins our America's Diamond Play of the Week. So congratulations to Keith and all of the nominees. Great backup uh, backyard matchup tomorrow night on the CW35 Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. It's Burbank and Jefferson. We'll have the call on the CW35. Chuck McIntenick, Mike Hernandez, and myself. 
again tomorrow night 7 on the CW35. And big time fallout at the University of Louisville. Hall of Fame coach Rick Pitino placed on administrative leave following the FBI shoe scandal there. And Louisville is just the tip of the iceberg. Auburn and others have had assistants named, including former Spur Chuck Person. And Avery Johnson's director of basketball operations at Alabama has just resigned after an internal investigation. So we'll have to see where that goes at Bama. Okay. We'll be right back.